This is a video lecture which discusses the environmental and socio-economic impacts of waste handling facilities. Not in My Backyard serves as an introduction to waste management and treatment technologies and was designed to support the landfill lesson plans created by Andy Long and Andy Lucas. The content in this video was created by Derek Smetzer. This video was made possible through the NSF-funded Boat of Knowledge and Science Classroom project at Ohio University. Where does our waste go? And who ultimately decides where to put our garbage? Waste disposal in the United States hasn't always been as environmentally conscious as it is today. In the past, communities would drop off garbage at a local dump site, essentially a hole in the grounds or at a site far away from the town. Nowadays, people within city limits set their garbage on the curbside, where a dump truck picks it up and takes it to a landfill or waste incinerator. The shift in the way we handle our municipal solid waste is mostly thanks to the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act of 1976. This act sets stringent legal standards on the storage, treatment, and disposal of solid wastes. Sometimes solid waste facilities aren't exactly as well placed as they could be. This is especially true in densely populated areas where space is limited. The video you are about to watch is a snippet from a news channel showing terrible waste management somewhere in England. They prefer to call it rubbish over there. 18,000 tonnes of weight and four floors in height. This massive tower of rubbish can literally take your breath away. Uh, made of stinking waste, it has been dwarfing the suburban houses of South East London for three years and residents of the cul-de-sac haven't braved to open their windows to chill in the summer. Sarah Firth reports. It is. It's a nightmare. It's, quite happy to say, it's, probably, it's probably the worst, never, place, worst place to live in Britain at the minute, I'd say. And he's not the only one around here saying that after a waste disposal company allowed this rubbish to pile up. Now estimated to stand around 40 feet. And how long have you been living with that as a neighbour? <laughs> the last, well, the last three years it's got this bad. The idea of waste fuel was to take waste on, segregate it, sell it on. So, so it's recycled, basically wood, plastic, metal, and then sell it on. That was how that was their business plan. And as far as you can see, it didn't quite work. It's not just residents who are upset. Since December 2011, the London Fire Brigade have sent out over 650 fire engines to 23 separate fires here, racking up more than £650,000 worth of resources. The Environment Agency recently asked the High Court to find the company in contempt of court after countless missed deadlines and injunctions to move the waste. The judge, though, dismissed the action, though it's not immediately clear why. Understandably, the company weren't keen to talk. Do you think the way the residents here are being treated by your company is fair? Although they did release a statement saying... Without a cash injection or agreement from the Environment Agency to allow the company to generate further income, we simply cannot afford to make substantial disposals. The legal fees incurred by the company as a result of the court proceedings have drained the company's resources. This money could have been put to better use by making disposals from the site. What's happened here is over a number of years uh, you've had various firms uh, all changing their name and saying they're, 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 they're different firms. They've been operating under a permit from the Environment Agency, who are the main people who are supposed to police this, uh, but no one has taken decisive enforcement action. Well, all this has meant that the residents that live here, instead of being able to enjoy the comfort of their own homes, are left in the middle of summer to deal with the flies and the dust and the smell that comes from that massive pile of rubbish. And quite frankly, that stinks. Sarah Firth, reporting for RT. As you just saw in the video, a private waste disposal company decided to set up shop near a residential area. Understandably, the neighbors appeared to be somewhat upset. Not in my backyard, or NIMBY for short, would be a natural response when somebody was trying to dump waste in your neighborhood. How would you feel if a landfill or a waste incinerator was sited near your home? What about a major highway or airport? NIMBY is a catch-all term used to describe community outcry against negative impact developments such as the waste disposal site in the video. When citing a waste disposal facility, a municipality will often weigh the public opinion by holding public hearings. Concerns with landfill sites usually include things like foul odors, 
health hazards, increased traffic, property value decline, noise, dust, debris, litter, visual aspects, and leachate. Take a moment to think about things in your area which may be considered as a nuisance or even hazardous to nearby residents. If something were to be built right next to your house, what would it need to be to entice you to move? Pause the video to reflect on these questions and discuss your thoughts with others in your class. There are many things which may elicit a NIMBY sort of response. Some examples are shown here, including landfills, waste incinerators, and toxic waste dumps. Take a moment to gloss over this list. Some of these may seem more deserving of NIMBYism to you than others. Unfortunately, waste is an inevitable part of modern society. Nobody really wants to live next to a hazardous facility, but these places have to be put somewhere, and sometimes that is in someone's backyard. Putting stuff in someone's backyard unfairly can often lead to what is known as environmental injustice. Environmental injustice can be defined as the disproportionate share of unwanted hazardous property developments being cited in low-income or minority residential areas. This can get somewhat iffy when these facilities do not even directly benefit the area being stressed by their, their, by their development. As an example, flood control structures along rivers can inadvertently flood upstream or downstream communities, depending on whose consideration is taken into account. Waste to energy facilities may often handle waste from out of state. The question then becomes, if we don't share the benefits of the development, it is, is it fair to place them in these areas? And should we share the environmental burdens of these facilities equally? Environmental injustice typically deals with the placement of waste disposal sites or with energy generation sites like coal-fired power plants. Oftentimes, alleviating the environmental burden of these facilities falls on grassroots organizations. Grassroots organizations are local groups which are dedicated to changing policies at the local, regional, or federal level. Because of the local nature of these groups, it is often difficult for them to incur change. They do not typically have as much fi financial security or backing as do businesses or municipalities. Chester, Pennsylvania is a classic case of environmental injustice. Located in Delaware County, Pennsylvania, along the Delaware River, Chester City is home to about 34,000 residents, 75% of which are black. About 25% of the residents lie below the poverty line. On the map, Chester City is symbolized with the yellow star. Chester City was once home to several waste incinerators, including one of the largest municipal solid waste incinerators in the United States and a wastewater treatment plant incinerator. Oil refineries and chemical production companies were also abundant in Chester. Most of the solid waste processed by the incineration facilities came from out of the city and from out of the state. All of the municipal solid waste in Delaware County was handled in Chester. To get insight into the grassroots movement in Chester County, follow the link to the documentary Laid to Waste. This documentary depicts the legal, environmental, and socioeconomic challenges of Chester residents as they fight against these facilities and their local governments to enact change. These maps show details of the waste facility sites in Delaware County as they correlate to average household income by township. On the leftmost map, poor areas are concentrated to the southern and eastern portions of Delaware County. Dark green townships correspond to average annual household incomes of less than $15,000. The central map depicts active waste handling sites, including hazardous waste sites, municipal waste facilities, and residual waste facilities. Residual waste facilities are those which selectively process waste, typically private businesses which do not serve the county directly. Abandoned waste sites are shown on the right-hand map. The larger colored dots are Superfund sites. Superfund sites are locations which are heavily polluted from poor waste handling procedures. These locations qualify for federal spending on cleanup operations. As you may have probably noticed, many of the waste facilities, both current and past, are located in poorer communities. The highest density of facilities appears to be in the southernmost regions of the county, with some scattered throughout the east and northern portions as well. Nobody wants to eat where they poop, but some people have little choice. 
It's no coincidence that these waste handling facilities are preferentially located in poorer areas. Property values in these areas are much lower, and these industries provide an enticing source of economic opportunity. People not living in these areas simply do not realize the environmental conditions the affected populations must live in, and this makes it difficult for outsiders to support local causes. As an additional activity, students may choose to investigate an environmental justice case by compiling a case study similar to the one presented on Chester. They may also compile a case study on an environmental disaster related to a waste disposal facility.